been the golf world's greatest stage. It's where Bobby Jones started the tournament as a gathering of friends. And Gene Sarazen turned it to high drama with the Double Eagle of 1935. It's where a pair of Texans held a shootout and Nelson beat Hogan by a stroke. And where yet another Texan put his own brand on the Masters, Jimmy Demerit, the first three-time winner. It's where Sam Snead dominated in the early 50s before a kid from Pennsylvania took the reins. And Arnold Palmer was the first to win four times. It's where Jack Nicklaus won back-to-back -back titles and a record fifth on a storied cut in 1975. Since then, it's a tournament that has featured the sure touch of Tom Watson. Tom Watson and the raw power of Seve Ballesteros, two-time champion and a leader again this year where we've seen and shared the joy of Ben Crenshaw. And last year's heartbreak of Curtis Strain. He found the water on the second nine's par five. And so gave way to the closing charge of West Germany's Bernhard Langer. The Augusta National golf's greatest stage, the Masters, a tradition unlike any other. Good afternoon. Welcome to the 1986 Masters Tournament. As in the past, the club will continue the policy of limited commercial interruptions so that the viewer will not be denied any of the live action. This unique policy could not be implemented without the cooperation of our two television sponsors, Cadillac Motor Car Division of General Motors, and the Travelers Company. And now, on behalf of all involved, we hope you enjoy the tournament. CBS Sports is proud to present the 1986 Masters Tournament, sponsored by the Travelers, one of America's strongest, most experienced financial experts, and by Cadillac Motor Car Division and your Cadillac dealer. It began Thursday morning. One of the honorary starters, Gene Sarazen, watch his feet. Same move, he's back in 1935. Playing alongside Gene Thursday morning as one of the starters, Sam Snead, the three-time Masters champion. He's now 75, but he's still got that graceful swing. As much as anything, the wind really dominated the first round here at Augusta. But Bill Kretzer from Fort Wayne, Indiana, had a steady hand on that Thursday. He shot a 468 and shared the first round lead with Ken Green, who demonstrated a putting touch like this. But then it was round two. And the golfer everyone feared, Seve Ballesteros, made a move on the leaderboard. An eagle on 15, and Seve would move to five under par. Then it was round three yesterday. This story belonged to Nick Price. After a first hole bogey, 10 birdies, and almost an 11 at 18. But he still wound up with a course record, 63. But the man who moved to the top of the leaderboard was Greg Cohen of Australia with that birdie touch at 17 and Seve Ballesteros went bogey bogey and there you see that Bernhard Longer, last year's Masters champion, has moved into a tie with Norman. Longer birdied number two. Norman has been a magician just to stay at six under par so far on the front nine. And how about Jay Hawes? He started the day even par and he went five under through the first eight. And now, of course, he is trying to battle his way through Amen Corner and make that home stretch run where he will have the clubhouse lead if he can keep his game together. Also within striking distance, Bob Tway, Donnie Hammond are there, and Tom Watson has lost a shot, and he is now three under par through seven holes here on the final round at Augusta. The weather conditions today, absolutely gorgeous. If you could just describe the day that you wanted to play golf, you would pick this one. It's warm, 85 degrees. Look at very little wind to bother these players when they come through that treacherous amen corner at 11, 12, and 13. Now let's go out and meet the gentlemen who are going to be describing 
the action for you here this afternoon at Augusta. Let's start at the 10th hole. I'm Bob Murphy. I'll be at the 10th hole, the 485 yard par four. You can see that the difficulty of this hole is playing over par, 4.2. The pin today is in the back left, and the danger, of course, will be hitting the ball over the green or to the left, leaving a very difficult chip shot. I'm Steve Melnick, and I'll be at the 11th hole, a 455-yard par 4. Degree of difficulty this week, 4.17. Today's pin placement cut near the small pond brings it very much into play. And I'll be at the 12th hole, a 162-yard par 3. Through three days, the degree of difficulty, 3.16. Today's pin placement in the back right brings that water very much into play as well. I'm Ken Ventura, and I'll be at the 13th hole, a 465-yard par 5. Four bunkers behind the green, but a creek protects the front of the green and the right side. Don't let the score in here fool you. They've had eight eagles. It's a beautiful hole, requires talent and experience. Today, the pin is in the right side of the green. It will take its toll today, but undoubtedly, it's the most beautiful hole at Augusta. I'm Gary McCord. I'll be on the 14th hole. Par four, dog leg to the left, slightly uphill. This hole is characterized by the most severe green on the golf course. It has a huge ridge that runs the width of this green. The pin placement today will be virtually inaccessible. I'm Ben Wright. I'll be reporting the play from the 15th hole, a 500 yards straight away par 5, where a big drive is required to the top of the hill if the player is to attempt a big carry over a pond in front of the shallow green. I'm Jim Nance. I'll be at the 16th hole, 182 yards par 3. Golfers will hit middle iron to a menacing green, which will slope toward the water, and today's pin placement on the back left will favor the golfer who can bring it in from right to left. I'm Vern Lundquist. I'll be at the 17th hole, a straight uphill par 4 measuring 400 yards. The pin today is cut back right, which takes the front bunker out of play, but leaves real problems for those going over the green. And I'm Pat Summerall. I'll be at 18, a 405 yard par 4. The finishing hole has trees on the right, bunkers on the left, a very narrow landing area. And whoever emerges as a champion when he makes the walk up that hill will experience one of the great moments in sport. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger down at the Butler Cabin, where about three hours from now, of course, the Green Jacket, the most prestigious prize in all of golf, will be awarded to the 1986 Masters Champion. What a scramble. This could be a day we wind up with a playoff, and if they do, the golfers will immediately, Tom Weiskopf, go over to the 10th tee and put it up there. Now, let me ask you, what does it take to win here today? What do you have to have? Well, Augusta is unlike any of the other majors, Brent. There is no rough here. It has wide fairways, but you need strategy off the tee because it is really a second shot golf course, meaning that you must put the ball in a position on the green to keep away from three putting all the time, putting pressure on your short game. It also favors the power player, the high ball hitter with a lot of spin to keep the ball up on those ledges, and they have to putt well here, and all of these players do just that. Now, let's go out to the sixth hole here on the front nine. Six is a par three, measuring today at 192 yards. Elevated tee perhaps 30 feet above the green, and the pin is cut back left some 24 yards from the front, so that bunker really shouldn't come into play, but the danger is keeping it left and kicking it off uh, the green to the left. Bernhard Longer at six under par. Perhaps the most difficult task in golf to repeat as the Masters champion. It's only been done once, and he is the defending champion, of course. There's a large knoll on the right side of the green. You want to stay away from that. And Longer has left himself quite some distance. Fellow competitor Donnie Hammond I told you all yesterday he was a gallery guard here back when he was a teenager. Primarily at the 13th hole, what a thrill it must be for him to play in his first Masters and to be in contention on the final day. Hammond currently at minus Never three. Never tried it. Go with it if you want. Bogey the fifth hole, three under, having lost two shots to par today. This is a real task here, isn't it? Club selection. It is, Vern, because you're playing so much downhill. There's a change of elevation, maybe close to 30 or 40 feet. 
and that pin is protected by that huge bunker and what Donnie's concerned about I'm sure is just to take the right club and hit it hard don't hit it easy hit it hard here he took a rip at it excellent shot let's go back to the fifth hole Fifth hole is a 435 yard par four. Greg Norman for birdie. Norman's even par through the first four holes, but it's been anything but easy. Up and down at one, up and down in two for par. Great save for par at four, where his tee shot went through the green. Typical final round pressures of a major championship. Wind beginning to pick up now. Early in the day, it was dead calm to now. You see that breeze freshening, that flagstick moving in the wind. And this is Nick Price. Another one of those contingent of foreigners that we've talked about. Originally from Zimbabwe. We have a Spaniard, a German, an Australian. We've got Gary Player joining us. Gary, is it, you like seeing these foreigners taking part here? Well, Steve, I don't know. I don't believe in the word foreigners. I think we all just golfers playing all around the world. Tell us about Nick Price. I think that Nick Price really is uh, what I'd call a very humble man and a, an outstanding gentleman. Uh, I think everybody likes Nick and he's a very, very talented man and I think he's going to do very well in the future. Well, he cer certainly credits you with his presence on our tour. I think you initially brought him to this country or had something to do with it. Well, I think it's his, uh, his own talent that has done it, uh, Steve. Price with a bogey at three came back with a fine birdie at the long par three fourth hole he has some work left for par here Nick Price on rounds of 79 69 63 An incredible 10 birdie third round new course record here at Augusta National while we wait let's go to 13 in just the right time to watch Jay Haas go for birdie to go to six under for the day and the tournament. Just leaves it on the top lip. Let's go back to five. So that par price remains at five under, just as he started the day. This may be the easiest par Greg Norman's had thus far. Let's go to six. Bernhard Longer. But we'll have a considerable break right to left. ago, Steve Melnick talked with Bernhard Longer and asked him if it would be easier to win today than as the defending champion. It's not going to make it a lot easier, but uh, it might help a little bit because I've been in a similar situation last year and I won, so maybe I can do the same thing this year. <laughs> so, safely in, let's go to Brent Buster. All right, Bern, let's take a look at some action earlier, Tom. This was Seve Ballesteros on the first hole. A perfect drive to the center of the fairway. Probably played a short iron here to the back left pin placement. And it was an excellent shot. Right? Some 15 feet short of the hole. 
He just missed the birdie putt, stayed one shot behind Greg Norman at the moment, and then it was Bernhard Longer's second shot. Again, a perfect drive, but pulled his second shot to a very tough position to get the ball up and down from. And he was able to do it, save par right there. And the man who has had to save par throughout this opening round has been Greg Norman. Well, after a poor tee shot in the right woods, I'm sure nerves have something to do with that story. He played a miraculous little chip in the line right here because that is a very difficult shot that he played. And he put it up to within three and a half feet. So he saved par on the first hole, and then on the second hole in the twosome just in front of him, it was longer for the birdie. Yes, this is from about six feet. Good putt, good solid putt, man. Became one of the co-leaders. Back on two, it was Norman for the par. Well, he played his third shot from the bunker and sculled it over the green and had a very difficult fourth shot, which has to be played downhill through a little swale, and he, and he saved par again. Longer for par on the third hole. Bernard, Bernard uh, has been playing very, very well, and again, leaves himself in a good position, you know, to make par. Greg Norman finally had an easy hole. Just missing the birdie there on three, but he makes his par. by the name of Tom Kite. And this is at the fourth hole, a long, I'm sorry, that's Bernard Larger at the fourth hole. This is a long 220 yard downhill par three. Very difficult hole, and he played a very good shot right there. than Greg Norman. This is a par three fourth hole. Probably a two or three iron, and Greg went over the top of this shot, pulled it, put it through the green, and put himself again in a very, very difficult position to save par. Here is Nick Price. Well, if you're going to hit a long iron and hit it well, this is the perfect example of how it should look. So everyone, Norman the Magician. Well, he's over there on the next tee almost, the 15th, Brent, so he has to chip the ball up through a swale, and then the ball goes downhill to the pin, past the pin, to within three and a half, four feet again. And believe me, that was a marvelous golf shot. Price had lost a shot. This was for the birdie really a much needed birdie it gives you a lot of confidence to come back after a bogey with a birdie especially on hole number four Brent. Tom let me ask you when you save par here again what's the feeling it can't get any worse it's my tournament now or do you get a little jittery and say what's going to be for me in the holes ahead? Well like you, this is number six uh, Nick Price again probably a six iron pins in the back part of the green good golf swing right there we're watching he pulled his shot. And let's go out to the hole now, Tom. Well, that is the problem we talked about uh, when we came on the air. That pin placed only 15 feet from the left edge. I saw John Manhattan this morning have problems getting it up and down from just about that same spot. Now Greg Norman. What a wonderfully scrambling first five holes he's had. This again is at par three, 192 yards today, and the pin cut back left side. Tom, is, is that the most difficult pin placement on this screen? I wouldn't say so. They're all difficult out there. Really, the top right pin placement is the most difficult. If Greg plays a right to left shot and uses the bank to the right of the hole, he has a chance of getting this ball very close to the hole if it's hit properly. Mm -hmm. was 12 to 15 feet away from birdie at six now we're back live and this is nick price from the left hand side now tommy will he try and play a little bump and run shot here 
Well, Vern, I think this, this is the wonderful thing about Augusta and a very confusing characteristic because he has so many options. He can putt the ball, he can play a chip and run, or he can pitch it. I would say he'll probably play a chip and run. No, he, see, that's the confusing thing. He knows he has three ways to play this shot. Jerry, what do you think? Well, I think it depends on how you're feeling at the moment, Brent. Sometimes you feel confident with a little lofted shot, and other times you feel confident with a bump shot. And that does vary from day to day, just like your feel varies from day to day. Nick Price, second shot. Well, he made the right decision. for Nick Price's far three. Not a tap in, he'll mark the ball, but uh, that was really a well-executed shot. And Greg Norman, our co-leader. These greens have, uh, have slowed down a little bit from the first two days, but uh, they can still be treacherous. Early this morning, Ken Green, who was a first-round co-leader, four-putted this sixth green. And a three-putt from three and a half feet. Norman with rounds at 70, 72, and 68. Burn? Yes, Tom. This putt appears to be flat. Uh, believe me, it is not flat. It is downhill, it is very fast, and it'll break left to right. Good opportunity, though. And this would put him back into sole possession of the lead, the position from which he started the day about an hour and 22 minutes ago. afternoon and Greg Norman is back in sole possession of the lead in the final round of the 1986 Masters. Greg Norman's first birdie has put him at seven under par. Ballesteros and Longer are just a stroke back followed by Haas, Kite and Nick Price. Welcome to the new world where all the rules have changed. A world of financial expertise to manage cash, build IRAs, finance mortgages, and a world of insurance protection for lives, health, and property. It's the world of the travelers, one of America's strongest diversified insurance and financial experts. Have you looked under the traveler's umbrella lately? Announcing the classic Cadillac for 1986, the rear-wheel... Well, here at Augusta for the final round, it's kind of like us against the world, if you will. Sandy Lyle of Scotland is paired with Jack Nicklaus, the five-time winner. Tommy Nakajima of Japan, he went out with Tom Watson. Seve Ballesteros of Spain, paired with Tom Kite. Donnie Hammond against the defending champion from West Germany, Bernhard Longer. And, of course, Nick Price of South Africa and against Greg Norman, the Australian. And let's go quickly out to nine. Shortest par four on the course at 360 yards, known as Pampas for the grass that is growing in clumps behind the tee, and now Nick Price. Most of the players go with uh, fairway woods and long irons. Here. Yeah. swing and a 
splendid result. It's a very narrow little par four with five bunkers encircling the green as we go to the ninth. When it goes right over here. This is a par putt of about 15 feet. He's looked at short. Jay drops a stroke here now to go to four under par, and he's got to make some birdies real quick to try to get up towards the top of that leaderboard with just a few holes remaining. The problem we're going to have here on 14 today is the pin is cut right against this ridge, and any ball that's left short of that ridge, it's going to be very, very, very hard to get up and down. We have Seve Ballesteros, top of the leaderboard at eight under par, followed by Greg Norman, Bernhard Langer, Tom Kite, and Nick Price. Moving into contention at five under. Gary Player, let me quickly follow up that question about us against the world, if you will. Why are the foreign players so much better today? What has happened to the game of golf? Well, I think there's a great incentive now, and uh, people have learned a lot about organizing, like from the Masters here all over the world. But let me just say one thing, that when Bobby Jones was here, he always said one of his greatest wishes was to see more international players, the same as the sponsors and the American public want to see their players line up against the best. I was amazed to see in the paper the other day, one man said it makes his blood boil to see all these foreigners doing well. He's not thinking very big. No, the Olympics uh, bring out some of the best in athletic competition, and if we get something like this going, I would think it would be great for golf. I think the tour really needs that. Gary, you, of course, were the first foreign player to win here. What does it take today as we go back out to the course to win the green jacket? <laughs> you could have everything going right, and I'm just choking just watching it here, really. <laughs> this is marvelous. <laughs> Gary, thank you very much. Let's go out to the seventh hole. And Greg Norman. waiting for what is happening on the green which uh, involves Bernhard Langer who is six under par and Donny Hammond who is three under par and that was a fourth shot of Bernhard Langer who is obviously tangled with the trees that uh, close in on you on both sides of this very short but deadly little par four so, longer in all kinds of trouble. Donnie Hammond, who started the day at five under par, made uh, a bogey at the first hole. He birded the second, but he bogeyed the third. And there's uh, uh, Sevi Ballesteros, who is uh, in trouble at the ninth hole, and that's where we'll go. Up at the green, Tom Watson. the only place to stop it is in the hole. Earlier today, we talked with Tom Watson about Augusta. Well, experience is, uh, I think, it is a big factor because uh, I've been there before. Uh, there have been several players that have been there before. Bernard Longer, uh, Ballesteros, Jack Nicholas. Uh, I'm sure I've missed somebody who's been there. In the, uh, going down the last nine holes, uh, you have to have the experience to know, judge what the wind's going to do, and uh, pretty much know what it's going to take to win and do it. Yeah, that was Nakajima. And that was his par. We go back to seven. And Bernhard Langer putting and making his bogey and dropping him back to five under par just as he started. His only birdie the second hole today. 
And this narrow little par four claims another victim as we look back to Greg Norman at seven under par, alone in second place behind his friend and rival, Sebi Ballesteros. It's only a nine iron at most. But it's a shallow little green and it is virtually surrounded by five bunkers. back enough that's going to give him uh, still a very testing putt with a big right to left swing now, Nicky Price who really played a very aggressive tee shot here he's at five under par just as he started with a bogey at the third hole and that magnificent uh, long iron shot at the fourth for a birdie The hole is cut just four yards from the left-hand edge of the green, and that is the kind of thing that can happen when it is placed there. He's going to have a desperate downhill slider left to right from there. And we'll go over to the tenth. That's Gary Koch, putting for par. Gary today is two over par, so he needs a few birdies on the back nine. He said he just hadn't been putting well this week, and you're not going to do very well if you don't putt at Augusta. No question about that. And we'll go to 15. This was Jay Haas with a three-wood just a few moments ago. Go. And a go. wonderful looking shot that is. That's right at it. And Jay Haas has a great opportunity for a birdie here and could set a target now to the ninth. Ballesteros in trouble, along with Kite. Kite's not in trouble, but that's his playing partner. Ballesteros is with difficulty. Studio and Brent Musburger. All right, Pat, thank you. And uh, Gary Player has to catch a plane and, uh, and get back, uh, return to his home. Gary, would you like to tell us uh, who you think might win this Masters? Would you like to pick a champion for us? Well, I don't think you can ever win doing that, but if the best player wins, it'll be Ballesteros because he is definitely the best player in the world. There's no question about that. He's got strength and finesse of a locksmith. All right, thank you very much, Gary. Now let's go back out to the course. Well, there he is. And he's going to need to be a locksmith to get this close. Tom Weisskopf, what do you think Gary meant by that? By being a locksmith? Yes. Well, his touch is so fantastic. His ability with a short game is just that much better than anybody else. Not there, though, Pat. What he was protecting against Pat right there was the bunker that protected that pin from where he was. He's got some work cut out for him right now, though. Does he indeed? He needs another key. Back to 15. And now Ben Crenshaw with his second shot with a three wood from the best part of 240 yards. shot comes in here at one under par for the day and the tournament and as we go to the seventh hole Nicky Price taps in for his par having chipped quite elegantly from behind the green and he will remain at five under par just three off the pace but the pace uh, like to slacken off a little since Ballesteros is having all his problems at the ninth hole Let's have a look at his chip shot down this glass. Oh, it's a putt. 
Superb. Now Greg Norman with a really tricky putt. This green is traditionally very fast because uh, it is exposed to the wind which is distinctly freshening this afternoon and there you see how these uh, invaders have intruded in the last eight years. Ben, are you an invader? You could say that. We like you, Ben. Thank you. Oh, that's uh, way offline. Uh, that's uh, left himself an awful lot of hard work to do to stay at seven under par. And over to the ninth. And by Asteros. That's his fourth shot. And some work to do coming back for Seve. He has the outright lead at minus eight. Norman at seven. And that could all change in a moment. Kydis five, Bernhard Langer, the defending champion is five, Nick Price is five, back to seven. And this really important part for Greg Norman, of course they're all important today, but this to remain at seven under par. Little swing to the left. Nicely performed, and so Greg Norman stays at seven under par as we go to the ninth. himself but sure to 15. Ben Crenshaw has this putt for an eagle he knows it only too well and it uh, will go I think a little to the left this is a, an unfamiliar pin placement for the final day an interesting one in that it uh, gets the players to go at this green Well, he thinks it goes the other way, and he's right. And now, he will have the, at least four feet coming back for his birdie. Green's getting distinctly treacherous after yesterday when they were only single cut and they were distinctly slower than normal. And now Jay Haas has this great opportunity for an eagle three, and if he could get into the clubhouse at six, seven, maybe eight under par, he could really give all those players way out on the golf course a tremendous task to beat him. This one definitely does go left to right. fringe a little, it uh, didn't take off at all helpfully for him, and back to the ninth. By Steros. That's for five. <laughs> Tom Kite said he's playing partner, by the way, made his par, so he stays at five. By Steros drops back to seven, we go to ten. Earlier, Jack Nicholas for birdie. Go four under par. And the bear, the bear is stalking. Come on, Jack, smile. That's it. We won't count him out on this back nine. How many times has he played it and next to nothing to win? Back in the fairway, Tommy Nakajima. Driven it in the right trees, actually. I'm sorry. What a 
shot that is. Left himself some seven or eight feet for birdie. We'll go back to 15. And Ben Crenshaw. Oh, dear. Well, that uh, was virtually his last chance gone, so the 1984 champion will not repeat, and he will remain at one under par as we go back to the eighth. Here we have Donnie Hammond. Probably got about uh, 60 yards, third shot. That pin is cut back in the left of this green, which actually is a dog leg to the left green. Donnie looked like he chunked that a little bit, and he's got his work cut out for him here. He's got a good 50-footer up over this rise and into a green where the pin is, slopes drastically from, from right to left. The last group that just went through here, um, nothing really happened. Uh, Tom Kite hold a 100-yard wedge, and then Seve hold a 25-yard wedge shot on top of him for two eagles. So we have, at this time, on our leaderboard, Seve Ballesteros, 